Determine what it takes to run your business and the expenses that go into your product, be it your skills and talent or your tangible actual products. Decide what you think is a reasonable profit to make on top of those costs and then your price to include those costs of doing business and show your clients you know how to run a business and take into consideration all the things other business owners have to consider also, and then you price it appropriately. Welcome to the Damn Good Designer Podcast. Join host Cheryl and Liz, the visionary and integrator balancing all the moving parts of a full-service interior design firm. Get ready for a wild ride as they challenge the norms, challenge the industry, and challenge you with damn good truths about what success looks like today. Now your hosts. Welcome to another episode of The Damn Good Designer. Liz and I are here today with you after a very busy week this week doing... Oh, I don't know, all the things, you know, including a brand video shoot, which was really kind of fun. And next week, I get a little break and take off to Indiana, 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 what the heck? <laughs> Indiana, which I have never, clearly never been in, uh, where we will be hosted by, or whether um, a bunch of us will be hosted by Delta Faucets for a couple of days, along um, with, you know, some of my favorite uh, colleagues. I've found out recently that some of the other people I know are going to be there. So that's going to be very exciting. And we get to go to the Pink concert. And um, not that I've ever heard Pink before, but <laughs> hopefully I'll recognize something there. But um, they really roll out the red carpet. I've done things with, with Brizo before um, and Delta, and they really do a cool thing. So that's going to be fun. But I don't know what Liz will be doing because Liz will be here with the team corralling everyone and I don't know what they're going to be doing for three whole days while I'm out but uh what are what are you going to do Liz I mean what's your plan here for well the plan was to working try to really your, hard your your office revamped a little bit and we've got a couple oh, of be great s- smaller meetings and warehouse stuff to take care of so I think it should be a busy one I'm hoping okay all right well don't 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 bother me with the details about the warehouse stuff you know how I feel I about that okay so all right here come back and be surprised y- yeah, and it would be <laughs> lovely if I came back and my office was just like sort of the big reveal. Like, how great would that be? Like the big reveal, the the thing that we do for clients and you came back and I mean, the window treatments are already done and all I'm doing is getting a new desk and some furniture, but maybe y'all could get a rug or get one of those vintage ones we sell and put it up there. I mean, hint, 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 just maybe we'll let Libby listen to this ahead of time and maybe she'll get the idea. But anyway, we can get going with our topic of today. So here's the little drum roll. You know, it takes money to make money. Ta-da, that's it. It takes money to make money. Probably not a big revelation for anybody. But professional designers understand that it costs money to travel to market, to learn about the products they specify or how important it is to pay for a good attorney in your state, to develop a contract to suit your needs, or to get a CPA to help you know when it's time to become an S-corp and all the things, you know, all that. Yes, 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 it costs money to do all of these things. You know, I don't know, Liz, who sold people the fairy tale that sometimes I see put out there on the Facebook groups and and things like that, that it's a cheap business to get into because I really don't think it is. I don't think there's any business that is cheap to get into. If it were a cakewalk, then, you know, everybody would do it, right? And by the grace of all intelligent creatures, anyone who balks at pay to play or orders a 999 contract off of Etsy or crowdsources tax advice or you know, all the, the things, you know, and then actually has the huevos to complain about clients shopping them, mm, That's what we're going to talk about today, or not wanting to pay their fees. I just can't wrap my head around that nonsense, and we see it all too often. You know, I'm going to tell you, karma will kick you in the butt if you complain about a fee to attend a seminar or or the cost to get to market, you know, like we just paid a pretty penny to get there with all the people we have to see the vendors for the products that you're going to sell and or leveling up your education, maybe, or any of those things. And then you turn around and ask clients to pay you $200 an hour and then complain, they're shopping you. Oy vey, am I the only one who sees the irony here? Some days my head whips around, Liz, like, I don't know, 10 times faster than I talk or something. I just, I don't understand it, but we're going to talk about it today. I know, you ingrained this in me, I feel like, very early on when we would start, you know, looking at the whole, like, we'd have to hire someone, or, you know, we wanted to maybe revamp something on the showroom floor, or whatever it is. And, you know, associating the cost that it takes to make things happen 
is got to be looked at as a long term investment, but also just associated with how it is that you want to do business and how you want people to perceive what you're doing. You've got to be smart about that. It can't be something yes. that you just are frivolous about and don't think twice about before you strategize how you're going to approach your clients. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I've got so much to say about this. And I don't I don't really I don't blame anyone for not knowing what they don't know. I mean, just like clients, you know, we don't blame clients for not knowing what they don't know, right? But, you know, here's my theory on this. And I don't know what you think about this, Liz, because, you know, you're not, you're not in all the Facebook groups and the things I do that I'm looking at and, and participating in and, and, uh, and, and trying, and, you know, in our own group and small business think big and all the things that we do. You're not really there to see all that. I know I screenshot some things and send it to you and all that kind of thing. But my theory is that many designers get started as a side hustle while working another job maybe, and then they decide that when they can make a leap, okay? That's understandable, totally understandable, I get that. But, you know, or maybe they're fresh out of school that uh, teaches very little about finances and how to run a business properly, we all know that. You know, I think they assume that everyone's gonna hightail it for a commercial job. And then the, these designers start to get busier and then busier, and they start doing really great work, and they're really excited about that, and they're getting known a little bit, and then they get swamped. They're outsourcing a lot of the business tasks, that sort of thing. And maybe they never take the time needed to really study how the correlation between how you handle money and pricing actually telegraphs to your clients, especially your ideal clients that you wanna work with. And maybe they love your work and they're good with your pricing and all of that, but later on when stress enters the picture, like it has for everybody right now, I just wrote about this for my column in Home Accents Magazine and for November, and I think it's gonna be a really good one. Um, but when stressors enter into the picture, uh, it, they might be running low on funds because the cost overruns or, or whatever, things have pushed the budget higher, or whatever. Then they start to think about it a little bit more about everything. They start to analyze things a little bit more, right? Right, and we talk a lot about how it is that you can kind of slow down to strategize about how to position things to clients. And I think that that time that it takes, that effort that you have to put in, maybe on the front end for some people is probably difficult to do. I mean, you've been doing this a long time. The yeah. business perspective was very clear for you, I think, in probably a lot of ways in terms of structure, but also there's a lot of policies out, that, <laughs> there's a lot mm. of policies that we've grown into just in terms of how we like to handle things internally. But it all, goes back to this idea of positioning of, of how we want clients to feel and how we have to be able to be on the front end of whether it's setting expectations or disclaiming or outlining good deliverables to make it really, really clear for people so that we don't run into these issues. We don't have situations where there's a lot of confusion or people get frustrated about things that really shouldn't be even a factor. Right, right. I, I Okay, so, so it's all about the that really the concept of there is a cost of doing business, all right? And so here's one of the things that drives me a little bit batty when I see it, because it gets talked about a lot. And there's probably a lot of people that are, are going to turn me off as soon as they start talking about this. So please don't just hear, hear us out about this and the rationale behind it. But many designers, they want to be that retailer, right? They want to be the retailer and they want to make a profit on product. And I totally endorse this, totally endorse this. I am here to support you with that all day long. I have done talks at High Point about it. I am, it's a very big deal to me. But then, you know, let me ask you, do you think retailers charge a fee on top of the sale of their furniture when someone uses a credit card? Yeah, that's, I, that's, that's something that really just gets in my craw about this. And I'm not saying that you don't do it, but, but do you think retailers do this? So you say on one hand that you want to be that retailer, and you want to be that, that source for your clients and you want your clients to buy into that. But you know, Betty and Veronica aren't typically taking wads of cash into the furniture store to buy a new bedroom, right? And I do not know a single soul who has had a checkbook since uh, 2010. Maybe, two, I, I swear to you, I cannot remember the last time I have written a check that wasn't a business check. You know, I, it's you been a very long time because so many things are done online and all that sort of thing. But it's a fact of human existence that people want to use their credit card. Okay, let's let's just let's just admit that. You know, there's no gnashing of teeth on this. It's the reality. Wake up and join 2023. You know, this is the reality, and it's been the reality for a long time. So so here's what I want to say gently: If you want to be the retailer for your client, you know. 
why, why don't you do the same? Why don't, you know, I don't expect you to lose money. I really don't. I don't, I don't lose money. Neither should you. But this is a part of the cost of doing business to be able to um, absorb that fee, but you're not absorbing it, meaning that you're paying for it. You're just going to put it into the cost of actually uh, your product. You know, and and uh, this is what we do with the costs that are needed to operate a business. We include them into the price of our product, and I'm, by product I mean you know all of it. I mean the the product you sell, the the product uh, of your um, creativity, all of that sort of thing. So so I'm not suggesting here before everybody gets all you know freaking out on me or anything that you eat that fee of credit cards. I am not saying you do that. I am saying that you don't put it as a line item expense, you know, or a line item, uh, not a line item expense, a line item uh, on the invoice and, and making a big whoop about it and then talk about it in Facebook group saying, you know, my client doesn't want to pay that. They don't understand that, you know, or whatever they may be saying. It's not that you're not going to do that. It's about how you, the perception of the client having to, you know the the perception of the client and how they see it on that invoice as an extra a, a, an extra expense to them it's not about not charging for it right and as much as we can of course we talk about this all the time but we want to remove situations where clients feel like they're being nickeled and dimed or where things are being broken out or where they're having to question or put all this extra effort into making a decision yes. you want payment of invoices to be easy because the less effort you have to put in, the less time you have to chase it around, the better. And you want the client to be able to look at it and just say, yes, there, there shouldn't be all this other hubbub around it. And you want to make sure that they feel very confident that you've got your stuff under control because they're going to be spending probably a good amount of money with you. So if you can't make it easy and make it very approachable in today's modern day so that people can make it happen and move on with their day, then you're going to run into bigger issues for sure. Yeah, this is this is this is really what we're talking about here. We're not talking about, you know, just the credit card fees or whatever. That's just one thing that we can talk about. You know, it's a short show, so we can't go into all the other costs of doing business and that sort of thing. But we're really talking about here. What we're really saying is we're talking about the perception of the client and how important that perception is, you know, and and think about your own experiences. Okay, think about your own experiences. How do you feel when you're dealing with a company and they have a billion add on costs? It gives you a, a little bit of anxiety. You know, it gives me a little bit of anxiety. What might be hidden in those line item costs and why? You know, like, why is there just not a price? Why, why is there all these other things, you know, to this? Like, wait a minute, like, what, what's up with that? You know, there's all these other things and there's, they're, you know, receiving and the shipping and the freights and the this and the then, and then I have to go over here and I have to go over there and I have to pick up the, the chair and I have to carry it across the room and that's a charge and this is a charge and all that sort of thing. I think that any of us are get a little bit of anxious about this. That is going to be human behavior. That's what people do. You know, I, I don't really want to see the milk being taken out of the cow personally. That's not really my my thing. You know, I'd rather trust somebody and do business with somebody I trust and and know that that's what's going on. I mean, I don't think that, again, clients are expecting you not to make money. But the easier you make it for clients, like Liz is talking about, to really understand what they're paying for and how it ties into what you deliver, the more they're going to trust you. They'll see the value you're bringing to the table, and that's what keeps them coming back. You don't have to explain every nuance of a pricing structure. You just don't. No more than you have to you know, invite the client to ride shotgun with you in your accounting department. You do not have to explain every nuance. It actually gives the client more comfort to not have to be hit in the face with additional fees that truly other places they might compare to or they might shop at. It doesn't even matter if they are totally loyal to you and all of that, but it's not necessarily the experience of most businesses to be able to uh, to take that fee and put it on there. It's really more like utility companies do it. And mm-hmm. I'm sure that maybe some uh, vendors might do it. I know that some of our vendors do it when they are pricing their products to us. If we're going to pay by credit card, they might have that convenience fee. But this is a different, that's a business to business transaction, y'all. That's not a business to consumer transaction. So how that is perceived is not as touchy feely. It's not as big of a deal. I'm in a transactional relationship with my vendors. Okay. Let me repeat that again. I'm in a transactional relationship with my vendors. I am not 
wanting to be in a transactional relationship with my clients. And what happens here is everything then will become associated with a price tag. And this hurts their excitement. You know, it'll start to cause them to pull away a little bit eventually. And if you haven't experienced this, okay, that's great. But let's talk about 2024 and see how things might be getting back to normal. You know, um, and, and why do they, why does this mess with their excitement a little bit? Because you have turned, you will turn this collaboration into a shopping experience, into this transaction, just like you do in business to business with line items and lots of receipt tape. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this with, you know, plumbing pricing and with, um, you know, breaking out the cost of a lamp in an overall bedroom, you know, design concept and line iteming everything and people put all the pictures and they've got to approve it all by line item. You're asking for trouble when you associate the client's experience in a final approval and wrap up to get a project sold and to get everything ordered by separating all this out and making them more sort of aware of how the breakdown is. If you're within good confines of the budget and the expectation the client has to invest, then you should be in good shape. You don't want to associate what it is that you're doing with a shopping experience. You want it to be about the overall concept. So it translates the same way here. I don't need to know how much the little escutcheon for my shower head is going to cost in my shower. It's just not relevant. No, we so do not don't do that, that in other aspects of your business because you will call attention to it. We were just talking about this earlier about how it's like some sort of psychology. The more information there is to go through, it makes you like, I don't know, extra angsty to have to go through it. Right. It, it really does. I think we've talked about this on another podcast. I don't know if it's been released yet or anything else, but we really, we did talk about this. And I think we'll talk about it again because I think this is a little bit of a mindset shift for people and, and that sort of thing. And, and really, okay, so, so what this is called is the cost of doing business, okay? Whether it's a designer or a bull riding instructor or a podcast producer, it is the cost of doing business. There is a cost to doing business, but it does not have to cost you as much if you run your business properly. Your mind is playing these tricks on you when you look at your P&L and you see these negative amounts for credit card charges and and whatever you use, you know, whatever the case may be, we're picking on credit card charges today. But if you cover the cost in your pricing, it doesn't matter. And I'm not trying to upset any apple carts here. And if it works for you, great, you know, but do you really want to run the risk of taking off a client later on, especially when they have those stressors that are introduced? You know, they may say, oh, yeah, sure. OK, I'll, you know, that's not a problem to do all that and all that. But but later on, when things get a little more angsty, you know, with with any uh, big job that goes on for a while, you know, they might lose a little trust that you've built for months and months. And then you have them view you as not a real business. I mean, you go ahead and add it to the invoice and tell them about it and explain how you can't absorb those fees because you have to make money money too and you're not a bank and all the other pithy things you hear on Facebook. I mean, go ahead and do that if you want. Okay. I'm not going to do that. You know, our business is not a lemonade stand on the beach where my design fees are $4.99 with an extra dollar for ice. Okay. It's just not, you know, we charge over $500 for initial consult and I'm going to add 15 bucks to that or, or whatever it is. I don't even know if it's 15 bucks, what is 2.8% <laughs> or something? I don't even know. But you know, just because it's more efficient, for them and us too to simply pay by our credit card. So you're going to punish people because they want to pay by our credit card. I I just, I think that it's sometimes easier. I mean, we absolutely on initial consults want to send a link by, um, by square, which is what we use um, because over time the, the efficiency of square makes up for any other kind of, uh, you know, charges we might be able to get from a bank or that sort of thing. But, you know, I'm, I'm going to go out on a short limb and say, no, no, we're, you know, we're not going to, to run that risk of somebody uh, looking at that and going, really, you know, you're nickel and diming, you know? I mean, at $500 to $600, you know, in little old Peeville for a diagnostic initial meeting, we can surely afford that small cost to do business and set the rates accordingly. You know, we run a client-centric business. This is why I feel strongly we do not get the same level of issues. You know, Liz and I were talking about this earlier and, and sometimes I do marvel, like, oh, we just don't really get all these little issues. And, and I think that when you set everything up, okay, so, so stick with me here and let me try to explain this the best I can. When, you know, everything we do is about being a business. Okay, we're, we're very approachable. We're very fun. I mean, we, we are very casual. We're not stuffy at all, but it's a business. 
okay? It is a business. We are set up as a business. Everything we do is a business. And I have an advantage over some because we actually have a business location. Now, I think you can make great money and have lower overhead and all of that by working out of an office of your home. I don't have any issues with that until somebody has the funds to be able to get out. I will say that when I coach designers, I do say that's one of the things that as soon as you can get out of your house, I would do so because it lends a certain credibility. And it also sends a message. It sends a message. This is a business. And I don't have clients that later on go, well, you know, her overhead's low. So why is she charging? Why is she nickel and diming me for this? You know, and and they're stressed about all the cost overruns and everything else. And, and what they agreed to at the beginning is now they're, they're starting to analyze this. And this is what happens, y'all. This is what happens in the, the Facebook groups. People will say, oh, the client was great. They were, they were fine. I just don't get it. I don't understand why all of a sudden are they doing this. But this is why, and I, I feel strongly about this, this is why we don't get as much of the same level of issues because everything we do is about putting forth that we are a business. We are a legitimate business. This is not a hobby. You know, this is not something that I do in my spare time for fun. And clients see it. They feel it and they know it. And this just makes for less problems overall. Exactly. And I think that for us, again, to kind of like reiterate this, we're not saying that you ignore the fact that there are costs. We acknowledge that they're there. You know, they're an important thing to be able to look at a P&L and say, you know, how is this all adding up? but it's how you position it back to the client and how you engage them to understand that information or you know, structure your scope of work initially with them so that their understanding of what it is that you're offering and what the deliverables are that are associated with your service and the product that you're selling, and then you make it easy for them. I mean, again, it's, it's so important to be able to consider the fact that if they're going to be engaging with you in this big investment, you want them to feel comfortable. You want them to feel like you're really paying attention to what it is that they're spending their money on and that it's not being wasted left and right. So make it easy for them. Okay. So you're covering all your other costs of doing business, right? Because that's what you do. Why is this any different? You know, why do people have to do this mental masturbation with these types of issues? I mean, constantly, constantly, you know, I mean, there's got to be a self-help group for this, right? You know, some kind of 12-step program or something. I mean, really, really, truly. But, you know, okay, all kidding aside, let, let, me, let me talk to you about it just like I'm talking to anybody else. This is business 101, okay? You build expenses into the cost of your product just like you do any other business expense. So it's not even, I mean, yes, you are rolling it in, but you're rolling in everything. I'm rolling in the payroll taxes that I pay. I'm pro- rolling in the mortgage payment for the, for the building. I'm rolling in profit. I'm, you know, so, so I don't want to term it that way, rolling it in necessarily, because it's really not like that. This is how businesses operate, okay? And the BS you're being fed by so many Facebook warriors is not explaining how a business actually operates and giving you the truth. Okay, giving you the truth. People get flipping nuts about these charges when they see them on their PL. And this is the mind garbage you're you're you know binging on here by not understanding how a business actually sets their pricing. You know, you are going to um, figure out what it costs for you to produce your product, product in air quotes, okay? Because you might be a consultant only. And you know, here's the thing: if you are a consultant only and you are just strictly a consultant, that's all you do. You go out and do that, fine. Go ahead and, and charge that. If you don't want to include it, you know, in uh, $185 an hour or and make it $187.50 an hour or whatever it may be, I, you know, that's fine. If you don't want to do it that way, I, I, you know, I can get it more for a strictly a consultant, but I'm talking about typical design firms that are selling products also. And then they're, they're adding this onto it and getting all, you know, freaking out about it. But this is how businesses work. They set a price because you are adding all the things, you know, this is how you set a price. You don't pull it out of your butt. Okay, that's not how it works, all right? It's just not how it works. You have to be able to figure out what your costs are, what your cost to be open is. If you don't know what your cost to be open number is, you need to stop right now, put this on pause, and go and try and figure that out, okay? Or or let me know, and I will try to help you because your cost to be open number is what sets everything. And I think, again, going back to what I was talking about earlier, is I think sometimes when you are doing this, when you start out, doing this as a side hustle or you start out right after school and you don't, you know, know anything about anything because that's the way it is after school. Um, and, you know, all those kinds of things, when you, when you really haven't started out 
with a business plan, everything else, then maybe you're not thinking about it this way. I mean, maybe that's that's the the truth. But but what you do is you are going to figure out what the costs are in your product. Okay, and what that, and again, I'm in air quotes because it could be actual physical products, tangible products, or it could be your, your product, meaning your services, your creative vision, all that. What you need to cover plus whatever it is that you want to add to that, you know, for your profit, you know? And, and I'm telling you, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to the industry when designers freak out about this rather than incorporating it into their pricing. It, it really kind of is. I mean, I've talked to my CPA a couple of times about this and he's sort of gobsmacked when I tell him these things. And, uh, and we talk a lot about different things like this because things come up and I'll, I'll ask him, I mean, have you ever heard of that? And he's like, no, I mean, that's a crazy thing to do. And, you know, I know there'll be people who say that's the way we do it. You know, maybe many of you, I just, I'm just asking that maybe you think about it in a different way way. Just pause for a minute and just think about it in just slightly different way. I suppose it's kind of similar to to the whole freight conversation or the handling of RGAs when it comes to selling product and all of these things that come along with building the business and really being able to kind of expand the breadth of what you do. Before you just jump into something like that, you have to be able to think about what is it that's going to come along with these benefits? You know, we're going to be able to make more money on product, yes. But what comes along with that? Yes. What are the costs that we're going to have to figure out? And I think a lot of that probably is either overwhelming or maybe just misunderstood yeah. by people because yeah. it's hard to know what you don't know, like you said. But also, there are instances, I mean, I can remember years ago, we had a lot of orders with certain vendors coming through with claims, and it was just like, it felt like that's all we were doing. But you still have to manage that. You still have to provide that service to your client. You don't all of a sudden go to them and say, oh, I need to collect an extra however many hundred yeah. dollars because I had to spend no. all this extra time in the no, warehouse you have to for you. It. Yeah, yeah. It's you part have to build of, it into part your of the cost of doing business. Yeah, that's right. And you, and, you have to, and you have to think about that. You have to say, okay, you know, I'm ramping it up. I'm going to hit a million dollars this year or two million or three million or five million or whatever it is. And with that, there's going to be a percentage that I have determined that I'm going to have to spend extra time on RGA. So I need to factor that into my overall pricing. This is how a business runs. This is how a smart business runs. It's based on historical data and, and metrics. And I, I know this is, this is the disruptive reinvention of your business that I, I'm talking to you about. This is why I'm using this disruptive reinvention sort of tagline, because I just want to challenge the status quo of how things are done. And it's perfectly fine if you do it this way, because I am not suggesting that you don't cover the cost, that you, that you pay the cost. What I am saying is it amazes me when designers get all angsty about it and say this without thinking about it. It's like, hello, that is the cost of doing business because you have to think about it before. I, but I don't care. I don't care if you, if you, you know, do it that way. It's fine, you know, until it's not fine with a client, you know, until it's not fine, until someone gives you pushback. But mark my words, this is not how the big girls and boys are going to play ball, especially if you want to be the retailer. Okay, and a lot of designers are all in that. Why aren't we getting better prices from the vendors? Why aren't we getting this? Why aren't we doing that? You know, there's a lot of whining going on about that, but there's a lot of responsibility going when you want to be the retailer also, okay? There is responsibility for that, especially as you scale, okay? Now, you may be smaller right now listening to this and you're thinking, well, this really doesn't affect me, Cheryl, but it does. It does exponentially because you have more transactions when you get bigger. And especially as the market cools down a little scoochy scooch bit and returns more to a normal level of activity because I can tell you right now, you know, you, you could, you know, be a dog down the road. And if you said you had interior design skills, then you're working, you know, because that's the way it's been for the last couple of years. So make it easy on people. Make it easy on clients. Don't make them work so hard to assess an invoice. Give them a price and let it go. Design firms that want to avoid issues in perception with their clients are going to think like business owners first and foremost, seriously, first and foremost. The very first thing you do when figuring out pricing for a product of any sort is to determine the costs that go into that product, including potentially fees for credit cards or all the other things that go on. That's just the one thing we're picking on right now. This is the truth that no one seems to really want to talk about, that this is how businesses price their product. And you touched on it kind of right at the beginning there, Cheryl, when you talked about the fact that 
it may be okay for the level that you're operating at right now. But once you start to get into bigger projects with bigger scopes with bigger budgets and clients who don't have time for that Mm -hmm. I can't imagine for some of our clients if I was sending invoices left and right with all sorts of explanation we wouldn't be getting anywhere we wouldn't be able to operate most days so you have to think about it from a broader perspective too of where you want your business to go you know are you really truly refining that part of what it is that you offer enough so that a client can be engaged who really maybe doesn't want to have a real yeah. hands-on approach and who wants to be but, able to let yeah. you take it and run with it. Yeah, and, and and quite frankly, that's the clients that we want, right? right? So this all plays into that. If you say, you know, I don't know. I mean, and, and there's probably some right now they're saying, you know, well, Cheryl, not everyone uses a credit card. What about them? Well, here's what I say about that. I guess you just make a little extra for the 401k then, right? On those people. That's what I say. I mean, you know, there's no new law I miss, right? About how much money you can make. I don't think so. I mean, not yet anyway. Maybe it's coming, but it's not there yet. And and the thing that is going to drive me right off the very long bridge I go over every day is the same people who are playing the mental gymnastics here with themselves on this issue are the very same people who declare red flag when a client dares to question a price or shop them. I mean, think about that for a minute. Can you imagine that, that that is the, these are the same people that are then complaining about their clients, complaining about pricing, but then they're not wanting to do, you know, like realize that there's a cost of doing business. And again, No one is saying that the cost of doing business means that you are uh, always taking it, um, you know, yourself and that you're paying for this. What we're saying is just like Liz was talking about a minute ago with the RGAs and that sort of thing. Okay, so when that year happened that we had the the year of the RGA, we (laughs) affectionately term it, is we sat down and said, okay, now we have X amount of transactions. I'm going to develop a metric because Cheryl loves her metrics. Uh, that is going to be a, uh, a cost factor for us having to deal with RGAs. Now, so the question might be, well, what if you don't have a year of RGA, Cheryl? Well, then guess what? We get to make a little more money. Maybe there's more bonuses in the stocking for everyone, you know, that sort of thing. It's not like difficult, but you have to be able to think ahead of this. And this is, you know, anybody who counsels you on business, all right, like a real business coach, and that's what I am is a real business coach, not somebody who is just talking about specifics to interior design all the time or whatever. I'm talking about business concepts and precepts and that sort of thing. Anybody who who talks to you about that is going to tell you that that is the way that you set pricings. But it just drives me bananas when I think about people that are saying red flag to to a client questioning a price or quote unquote shopping them or whatever, but those very people are the ones that sometimes might be not really considering the client's point of view or being empathetic Mm -hmm. to the client's position when it comes to pricing also. Right. And I mean, I hate to get into it because this is a whole other topic really, but it's like you think about the logistics that we hear about sometimes with people who, you know, they don't check things in and then they get everything on site with a client for an install and then something's damaged and the client, of Mm -hmm. course, is going to be frustrated because, They have every right to be. They've been waiting probably for a long time to get this product in. But then somehow the the designer thinks that it's the vendor's problem. I mean, obviously, they need to file a claim and all that. But they've essentially relinquished all the control they could have had over the claim to figure it out and really make it happen to resolve it ahead of time. And then all of a sudden, the vendor becomes the problem and the client's the problem. And the designer never really takes the time to say like, well, what could I have done to make this right. easier and to or, not having or gotten ownership. all of everyone in a, yeah. And it's, right. I think that's so much a part of it is just being able to be more self-reflective of how am I instigating these problems I keep running into when people do give me pushback about the fact that they don't want to pay, you know, they don't want to pay 3% on my you know, for credit card fees or whatever it happens right. to be. It, it's, it's just, just that's kind of logical. Way. Right. It's, it's very logical. And I think that what you're talking about, I, I, I don't see very many designers really that aren't willing to, to, 
to fix it when a client has a problem. I, I really don't see that a lot. I, I don't think that, I think that's a, you know, I, I think that people are wanting to do right by their clients and people want to run a good business and all that. I think that this is just part of this disruptive reinvention that, uh, that I'm talking about, that, you know, it, it's okay if you're thinking, I, I never thought about it that way. Um, I just want you to think about it this way. I just want you to consider this and consider that maybe even if a client is okay with doing that, and this is, again, just one example of this, um, because, again, like with what Liz is talking about, that really truly is the cost of doing business because if you're right. acting as a retailer, then you know what, honey, you got to act as a retailer when the bad crap happens or too. Or maybe you it's like, just be a, you know, yeah. they end up wanting, uh, you know, maybe a refund for the delivery charge because they brought it out there and the client doesn't want to pay for it and they don't want to pay for it. And you get these kind of domino effect right. issues that would otherwise not be there, I guess. Right. And, and sometimes that's a case by case situation. Those right. things of aren't course. as clear cut of what you're actually going to do. But if you if you want to be the retailer and you want to be the retailer only on the good days, I'm here to tell you that that's not reality. You can't just be the retailer on the good days when you're when you're cashing that check and, and going to Bermuda or wherever the heck you're going uh, with all that extra you know money you're making. You, you are going to have to suck it up. And that's really the true cost of business with that. What I'm really talking about here is just like this, this redo of the way you were thinking about it and looking at these negatives on your P&L that are called expenses. You know, this is just another one you plan for. It's no different than anything else. And the optics are much better if you wrap it into the price and you just don't call it to their attention that, you know, oh, by the way, because you're doing a credit card, you know, fee, uh, like most people do, because again, no one's seen a checkbook since 2010, that you're <laughs> going to be penalized in some way. And I know some people look at it like, well, then I give a, a cash discount or whatever. I don't want to do all that. Okay. That's just extra work. If you want to do that, that's great. But that's just a lot of extra explaining and, and going through these machinations and blah. You said, we don't need to do all of that. And, and you know, this is just another expense you plan for and you wrap it into your costs just like you do the air conditioning and the salaries you pay people and all of that. And some clients may not care if you add the fee, you know, at first. But then, you know, when you're, okay, so, so here's the thing. Picture this. You're showing these upper income clients that you're really not willing to run a luxury business like a real business and, and, and not more like a freaking utility company because the utility company charges a convenience fee. Guess why? Guess why they do that? Because they don't determine their pricing like a small business does, okay? So think about that for a minute. A utility company is going to do that because they cannot, you know, they cannot change that. That's generally, at least in my state, is regulated. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, we're going to add that to the cost of doing business with everything. It's just not the way that a utility company runs because it's more of a governmental type of thing. They're not a small business, okay? And then also the same with your vendors. That's business to business. It's also a little bit different. This is about, this is not so much about anything other than the optics and the perception of the client. And honestly, I'd rather you even call it an accounting fee than a convenience fee because I just can't, that, all that stuff just drives me crazy. Um, but you can't complain when people dissect your invoices later on and, and maybe even ask for your bills from your vendors either if you're setting this sort of thing up where you're outlining all of this. You know, if you want to play in the sandbox of the luxury world, then you cover your cost to do business and make a profit. It's really as simple as that. And you don't nickel and dime in the perception arena, okay? That's what it's all about is the perception. Right, that positioning. And I think some of the most valuable tools oftentimes are found when you reflect back to yourself, like how would you want to be treated or how would you want it to be handled if you were getting the invoice or you know, you would be providing the information that has to be reviewed. The simpler that it can be and the more straightforward you can be about making the approvals process easy, mm -hmm. the the simpler the client is going to make it for you. You know, they're going to be thrilled to know that you're handling things the way that you should be, that the yes. pricing is clean and clear, that they don't have to go like dig back through their contract to figure out if they agreed to pay for this or that or right. all the other exactly. extra. I mean, no one wants to do that. I don't want to do that. I can. We, I just was saying earlier, when I get the plumbing operate. bill, yeah, yeah I don't want to have to look operate. at like, oh, this part was this much and this part was that much. And then you charged me $20 to get here, but $30 to get back to your office and blah, blah, blah. It's too much. It's, you've got to make that's a it great, That's a great that. example. That's a great example, Liz. So, so you know, you do. You, like, you have a travel fee for this and you have a travel fee for that, you know, according to the, the um, 
to your plumbing analogy. And, and that is exactly right. I don't want to start like putting that together. I'm not going to question the bill when he says, because, you know, plumbers are more expensive than designers these days. And <laughs> right. I'm not really going to question the bill when he gives me the bill. I just want my heat on or I just want my air conditioning on, generally speaking, in Florida is how we're looking at it. And I'm not really going to question that. But when you start when you start putting that perception of all these other things going on, I'm going, wow, he's really nickel and diming me here on this and that. And what, you know, why does and then it starts you thinking about it, right? It just starts you thinking about, yeah, you guys got to trust me on this consumer behavior thing. OK, I got this consumer behavior thing down. I understand it. I'm a marketing person from the get go. I am a marketing person. And this is all about the perceptions. And I personally, you know, my firm, we're not going to take the chance that even one client might wonder a tiny bit in their head if I'm really going to be able to be a good steward of their funds on these big jobs or not, because I'm acting like I'm operating a hot dog push cart charging extra for toasted bun and a few pickles. Okay, I'm just not going to take that chance, even though I know Plenty of designers and my friends too, mind you, that that do it this way, that that put that in as a line item expense, along with other line item expenses that we don't have time to get into today, that uh, are part of the same you know conversation about perception. You know, it, it, we get a lot of our business because we illustrate to clients we know we are doing what we're doing, running an actual business, that we are a grown up business. And to my ideal clients, y'all, to my particular ideal clients, but maybe not to yours. This matters. And that's why I think we don't, you know, have a lot of issues with this. They're, they're trusting us with gobs of their hard earned dollar bills. And they want us to be able to manage those dollar bills effectively. And when we fret and fume and fuss over credit card fees or other expenses that are incurred, but rather instead have calculated all of this into our business model up front and then give them a price without the flipping fanfare and, and you know, gnashing of teeth. They know something important about our firm. They know that we know how to manage money. You mentioned earlier that it, this whole conversation kind of oftentimes will turn the client into sort of disassociating from what it is that they hired you for in the first place. So you want the client to still be endeared to you by the end of the project. You know, I want clients to want us to come in with the artwork and the accessories and the extra window treatments for the kids' and they bedrooms and, and all those type of things. And you can't get to that place if you don't set up a really, really solid boundary along the way to make sure that they feel protected and like you're not getting into their pocket. I mean, that that I remember you giving me that mm -hmm. phrase early on when we were talking to new leads because it is a thing. You know, people assume sometimes that maybe working with a designer, they're going to be spending more and you don't want that to ever be no. how it is that they associate the services that you're providing because you're offering so much value. We all know we do it, but you have to prove that on the other end when it comes to how you structure your invoicing and you take care of them on managing how it is that their project executes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a really that's a really good point about that. And and I will tell you, I think I have found a direct correlation uh, with all the one million and twelve scientific studies done on designer behavior, humanely, of course, to have concluded that those who worry and post incessantly about the cost of doing business, rather than telling up the real expenses that it does, uh, you, they incur running their business in what we call this thing called a business plan, and then cover those expenses are the same exact folks who seem to attract those clients who shop them or otherwise commit other unpardonable sins of something along these lines. You know, can you imagine that? You know, the study might be in my dreams, but the reality is not. I mean, truly, let's just get over it and get after it and run a business like a business and include the cost. If you want to put those fees out there like that, that's fine. Do it with other things that you are thinking about that maybe you line item or whatever. But I'm telling you, it's so much better when you don't have this perception from your clients this way. Anything else to add, Liz, before we get to the damn good truth? Because I think we could probably, I think we could probably talk about this topic for a little while. Yeah, no, I think just keep it simple. Keep it simple, keep it simple as always. And do yeah, your homework. I mean, again, yeah, yeah. as long as you Remember. have the information up front, you think it through, this really doesn't need to be a difficult problem to face. 
it, it really doesn't. And if you do have an RGA year or something, I mean, I'm warning you right now that if you sell a lot of products, you are going to have an RGA year where, where you have to spend a lot of time with that. Just, you know, calculate that into the price of everything. And if you, if you are not uh, able to cover the price and all of that, then, then a couple of things have to change. Your expenses have to change. You have to put more eggs in fewer baskets with vendors to get better pricing. I mean, there's always an answer to this, okay? There's always an answer to this in some way or another on how to do this. But perception is reality. We all know that. And this is really what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, whether you decide to put the, the fees that way or not. What I'm trying to do is get you to think again about something that is very obvious to a lot of people that this is how they do it. And it's not the way we do it. It's not the way a lot of damn good designers do it because they're looking at it from a different perspective. They are looking at it as this is what I want the client to feel. This is how I want them to feel. And I'm going to give them a price. And if they give me cash, like the, the what's that guy that uh, we did the condo for that, that was a professional gambler oh. and paid us all in cash and everything. Yeah. You know what? Well, the price was the price. It didn't, it didn't matter. I still claim it all to the IRS because that's the way I run, you know, and all that. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but it was kind of, kind of an interesting guy. Okay. It so was, here's yeah, our damn, was. Yeah, he was, he was great. He was, he was an awesome. He left us a great review too. Okay. Here's our damn good truth for today. Determine what it takes to run your business and the expenses that go into your product be it your skills and talent or your tangible actual products. Decide what you think is a reasonable profit to make on top of those costs and then your price to include those costs of doing business and show your clients you know how to run a business and take into consideration all the things other business owners have to consider also and then you price it appropriately. You may not realize it today or even tomorrow, but this is the way to convey to a client you know how to be a good steward of their funds, okay? That's really important. That's what clients want. They want to know they can trust you and they have this big budget for all this great stuff that they want to do, all this great, wonderful design you're going to deliver and all of that. And they just want to know that you are going to be a good steward of their funds, okay? Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about how to run a business that is going to be sustainable over the long haul, give us a shout at damngooddesigner.com. Happy to talk to you about it. Uh, We don't take it lightly that you have chosen to spend some time with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here. Bye, y'all. Until next time, stay bold, stay inspired, and keep embracing your bad girl spirit. If you've enjoyed today's show, head over to join the community at damngooddesigner.com to continue the conversation and sign up for our newsletter. 